This month's general intention of Pope Benedict is not easy. All of us know or periodically see people who are unemployed and homeless. They stand on street corners where traffic lights stop our vehicles and with their signs announcing their need, they approach us or they stop us on the street as we hurriedly try to avoid eye contact. Or if we haven't had such personal experiences, we read about them in our newspapers. We read about how for the past year, the unemployment rate in the U.S. has averaged 9.5%, which translates into 15 million Americans, each with his or her own story. We hear about how on any given night there are between 700,000 and 2 million homeless people in the U.S. The reasons behind these figures are complex, and it's not just a matter of a bad worldwide economy. In some cases, usually the result of mental illness, some people choose to live under bridges and in parks rather than to go to a shelter. Because of age or disabilities of one kind or another, or for other reasons that have to do with what kind of work people are willing to do, there are so many without jobs. It's not for us to judge people who are homeless or unemployed. While we don't want to enable self-destructive choices and behaviors, we must always see them the way Jesus sees them. If there is a psychological, emotional, or spiritual problem behind their poverty, we need to have the compassion of Jesus who looked out at the crowds of people who came to him seeking help. Jesus felt sorrow for them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Last December, right after Christmas, Pope Benedict visited a shelter and soup kitchen in a poor section of Rome. He met with the staff, volunteers, and people who were served there. And he had lunch with them where he listened to their stories. This is the first thing that the Holy Father would have us pray for with him this month, that anyone who is in serious need would find welcome and understanding. In other words, a welcoming heart and an ear ready to listen and better understand their problems. Here's what Pope Benedict said to them. At lunch, I was able to learn a little of some of your histories that reflect current human situations. I heard of sorrowful events full of humanity and also stories of love rediscovered here at this soup kitchen. The experiences of elderly, homeless, or disabled people, immigrants, gypsies, individuals with financial problems or other difficulties who are all in one way or another sorely tried by life. I am here with you to tell you that I am close to you and love you, and that you and your affairs are not far from my thoughts, but rather at the center and in the heart of the community of believers, hence also in my heart. Then, after quoting from chapter 25 of Matthew's Gospel where Jesus says that whatever we do for those who are hungry, thirsty, or are strangers, or sick, or in prison, or are without clothing, whatever we do for them, we do for him. After quoting this, the Holy Father went on to say, listening to these words, how is it possible not to feel truly friends of those in whom one recognizes the Lord? And not only friends, but also relatives. I have come to you precisely on the feast of the Holy Family because in a certain way, you resemble it. In fact, the family of Jesus, from his very first steps, encountered difficulties. It experienced the hardship of finding no hospitality and was forced by King Herod's violence to emigrate to Egypt. You know well what difficulty means, but here you have someone who loves and helps you. Indeed, some of you have found your family thanks to the caring service of this community which offers a sign of God's love for the poor. Like Pope Benedict, like Christians of all times who were recognized by their love for those in need, we are called to open our hearts in prayer for all those in serious need. With open and praying hearts, we will seek ways to show understanding and to reverence the human dignity of those who struggle in the grip of poverty 
which often denigrates that dignity of creatures made in God's image and likeness. And then, from hearts filled with the love of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, from hearts that seek to understand, we will be in a position for the Holy Spirit to show us how we can give concrete help to those in need.